Uh, hi everyone. Today we will be discussing about a very interesting dimension reduction technique called as random projection. Uh, uh, every time, whenever we need to uh, go for dimension reduction in any of the data set, we usually prefer PCA. But PCA has some uh, serious issues. A couple of them that we would be discussing today are time complexity. So if you have a data set of the dimensions n cross a, n cross k, where n is total number of samples and k is the total number of features in the data set. So the time to complexity is equal to big O of k square into n plus k cube. Now, if your k, that is number of features, is very high, as in like say, if your k equals to 1000, 2000, or even 5000, uh, PCA can be uh, as slow as a snail. The second thing being that PCA is uh, get heavily distracted by outliers present. So uh, how to resolve this issue uh, and how to overcome this issue? So we have a technique called as a random projection, which can be helpful uh, for us and can resolve these two issues. So for example, uh, random projection is pretty fast. If you have a data set of the dimensions n cross k, the n total number of samples and k total number of features, the, to the total time complexity for its calculation is big of nkd, where k is again is still the original feature space and d is the reduced feature space. And it's also robust to outliers. Uh, so before moving ahead, we must know uh, what is the idea behind random projection. So it is based out of the Johnson Linden Strauss lemma. It states that uh, any higher dimensional data set, a very higher dimensional data set, can be reduced into a lower dimensional data set, uh, nearly preserving the distance between any two points uh, in the original space. So for example, uh, if we have uh, a data set with a dimension say 2000, 2000 features and uh, so this uh, original data set can be reduced into some lower dimensional data set say k where k is less than 2000 uh, say assume it to be 1000 1500 such that any point uh, p1 and p2 present in the original data set having the distance equals to p uh, when they would be projected uh, uh, when in the lower dimensional data set their distance would nearly be preserved so if their distance was p in the original uh, space when they will be transformed into the lower space, their distance still should be somewhere close to P. Uh, how is this useful in dimensional reduction? It is because uh, if you remember the, oh, the entire idea behind dimensional reduction is to reduce the dimensionality, keeping the distinctness between the points preserved. So uh, if two points are, uh, dist uh, are at a distant distance in the original data set, even in the reduced dimensionality, they should be away so that the uniqueness between the two points is preserved and the model is able to train on them. So uh, it is quite useful in random projection. This is the whole idea behind random projection. So let's know how random projection is calculated. It's pretty easy actually. So we take a data set K, assume it has a dimension M cross N, where M is the total number of samples and N is the dimension of the data set. Now we will randomly initialize a 2D array of the size of the dimension N cross D, where uh, D is equal to the new dimension that we wish to have uh, and N is equal to the original di the original data set pre uh, dimensionality. Now we would be in the third step we would be normalizing the columns of this uh, new matrix that we have taken R so that they become unit length vectors pretty easy and eventually we will be, uh, multi we will be matrix multiplying the data set K with the new uh, random matrix that has been taken. So K uh, multiplied by R gives us the final output equals to J, where J is the reduced uh, projection of the original data set K, as easy as that, uh, with the dimension M cross D, where M is, if you remember, uh, the total number of samples that we have, and D is the new uh, dimensionality of the reduced space. Did I miss out on to some points? Definitely yes, it is not that easy. Uh, can random projection be used for any dimension reduction problem? Not really. Uh, if you have very high uh, feature space, say 1000, 2000, and you wish to reduce it into some medium uh, dimensionality and not even lower. So, for example, if you wish to reduce it from 1000 to 1, it won't work out. Uh, if you wish to reduce it from 1000 to 20, it won't work out. So, the, the final D that we have chosen uh, has to be reasonable and it shouldn't be very low. Uh, as said, uh, now, how to determine... What should be this new uh, D as we said, D can't be any number. What should be this D? So 
so d can be calculated after reading a few uh, research papers there are few equations given which uh, either of the one can be followed up so let's follow up with the first one so d has to be at least as big as uh, 9 uh, into 1 upon epsilon square minus 2 into epsilon cube upon 3 into log of m plus 1 Now, eventually, uh, there are a few things that we can make out of this formula. The new dimension space that we have uh, doesn't depend upon the old feature set uh, size, but it uh, it essentially depends upon the total number of samples in the data set. So, you, you can see in the example, there is no mention of uh, the number of features that the data set has. Rather, it has it takes in account the number of samples that is m. If you remember, m plus n is the matrix that we uh, considered in the beginning. Second point is that. Uh, Uh, it can also uh, give us an idea whether the random suggestion would work for a particular case or not so while calculating d if this d is actually greater than the current n so for example uh, we have a data set of the size uh, m cross n where n is 1000 and eventually by following this equation we come to our d is equals to 1200 so eventually if d is greater than n we can understand the random suggestion won't work in our case now what is this epsilon in the equation Uh, so uh, basically, it's nothing but the error rate. The higher the epsilon value that we keep, eventually the lower we can go in D. So the lower the dimensions that we get, uh, the higher are the error chances. So uh, it should be kept low so that uh, we don't uh, the data doesn't go bogus. 